So I am here today with 3 eyed Line. We're here to talk about um, different tools to do with um, contacting spirits and contacting the other side and just generally things that you might be able to use yourself or that you might have seen other people use um, before. So everything from spirit boxes and how people use different kind of cameras and stuff like that to do um, paranormal investigations or try and get messages through in general. Or and uh, bibliomancy, which is uh, the use of books to convey messages of spirit. Oftentimes this is done with a Bible, but can be done with uh, almost any book. So we, we'll talk about that too. I actually had a book called, uh, it's called The Book of Answers. Actually, I haven't got it here. I think it's down. I have, I have a book. It's called The Book of Ancestors. The Book of Ancestors. I'll have to look at that. Um, what's that got into it? Uh, so it's basically stories of different encounters with ancestors from all over the world. So these are stories of different people, say a woman in China who... Um, saw the symbol of her family represented as the ancestors before she was saved from a car wreck or something. And uh, there's many stories of the ancestors directly or indirectly involving themselves in our lives. And so this book uh, does its best to tell these stories and, and I can use it as, as way to contact the, my ancestors and there's so many ancestors. So let's start with the spirit box because um, in America, it's not very popular. Um, in, in mainstream, the, the Ouija board is the main, main one here in America. But I know in Europe and other parts of the world, the spirit box has a more cultural acceptance. Um, the spirit box is like used a lot in uh, paranormal, paranormal investigations and stuff like that. Um, so like, um, it's, Let, let's explain it just for someone who, who has never seen one before. How would you explain that? So spirit, spirit box. boxes usually, um, basically, are some, some of them have apps and stuff like that. I'm still trying to experiment with some apps, but usually it's a little electronic device. And the idea is it scans radio waves really, 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 really quickly. And the idea is spirits interact, it, interact with it using their energy to pause it, basically, when it gets to certain words or phrases that they want to convey. And um, sometimes like the interesting, a lot of the interesting words come out, can come out of it from that as well. There is other forms of ones where it's like, depending on how they manipulate the energy, they can actually um, pick words from a dictionary and stuff as well. So the idea is they're using their energy to manipulate or change the, you know, the material pack line. So um, some of these they use as well, things like um, toys with sensors in them that they can tell if it's been touched or they do something if it's been touched or they it does something if um energy passes through a beam so i think that's the other thing and there are all ways for like um people that might not have innate um abilities to be able to try and contact and try and get a message through yeah and so my sister she uh she works with the spirit box she does um uh, and one time I was there with her and this is my first experience with it. And it was like a clear conversation from like the 30 different radio stations. Like you could hear it constantly changing, but it was clear dialogue from different sources. And it was, it, it was spooky because the moment when paranormal and technology come together in one thing, like, that's really cool to me. There's always been paranormal technology. Um, of dowsing rods is probably the oldest form of paranormal technology. Um, and I, I work with pendulums, which is technically dowsing. The I, dowsing, for people who don't know, is having either a metal rod, wooden rod, um, having a pendulum or an object that can be interacted by environmental conditions and vibrations that then can be interpreted for different things. Dowsing is most commonly used to find water and oil. 
um, in the ground, but is is also commonly in the history. It was commonly used for seeing if someone was sick or not, or seeing if it was going to rain this year, or seeing if if the flock has gone uh, north or east, stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, is uh, do you have any history with dowsing or anything like? Do you have any dowsing rods or anything you work with? I don't have dowsing rods. I do have pendulums though. I do use pendulums sometimes. Actually, I played my first pendulum I ever got was I was buying. Um, I don't know if you know about like the Love Oracle ones. You can't. Oh, See if it actually pops up. Um, that's weird. It's the way it's removing the background. It's a unicorn. Yeah. Nice. Um, the uh, Love Oracle ones, uh, the woman who actually did it originally, she kind of like changed her religion and everything like that. Um, but um, she stopped printing them. She stopped printing them completely. And they're really good cards. So you can't actually get them now unless they're either secondhand or knockoffs. Um, so I brought some secondhand ones of hers that somebody was selling um, off eBay. And the person so, who, sorry. I, I, I want to mention something that uh, I think is important for, for your audience here is because uh, she's not the only one. Uh, I, I worked with the, I, uh, I still work with the Thof Tarot made by uh, the infamous Aleister Crowley who disowned the Thof Tarot later on in his career. He said he, he didn't like it, you shouldn't use it, just use this other one. And he died you know, alone and sad and, and not in a very good condition. And, uh, but, I, the idea of if someone created something and disowned the thing they created, is that thing not useful anymore? And with div, with spirit communication, when I use the Thof Tarot, I think it's very, more accurate because he disowned it. Because he said, well, I, I don't like it and it doesn't agree with my teachings anymore. To, to me, by using it, I think it amplifies it. And with what you said, is because she doesn't approve of the deck anymore, the fact that you have it and you still think it's valid, even though she doesn't, I think that that belief might make it a stronger connection to spirit. I think that the important part is it's the the tool that was made was made and it is helping people still, so it should not be stopped, basically. Um, but she's just gone off completely. From what I've read and what I've heard, she went uh she went off like tarot completely she went off all forms of divination everything it's like you do get that sometimes in the tarot community where you'll get um yet you some tarot readers that are christians and tarot readers like my mom loves her tarot cards and she's a very firmly christian um, i'm not christian but um, my mom is and you get other tarot readers which are christian and they still do tarot but you get some tarot readers that um basically are really heavily into tarot and then they convert to another religion and then just stop reading because they think it's evil yeah i've seen that before but it's not evil we've gone through that before but um it's almost like people like if people are human basically and people have dark times and people have good times and stuff and i you know i've had to take breaks from like doing tarot and stuff when i've been going through like yeah. dark periods in my life and sometimes i think like that the people that made them might just be going through a dark period of life like you said like that crowley and you're you know not in a good place when he died and i think it's just unfortunately when sometimes when people disown things like that it's because they start going into a dark place um and it's because they can only see the negative they can't see the good that their creation is doing yeah and then it's always the idea is the creator versus the creation is what is the the line and but we can move to that with the uh, ouija board so you know, the Ouija board is made by a major uh, company of games and the Ouija board can be sold at almost any store. It's so popular, but nobody ever wants to talk about where it comes from, who was the first one. Who, these come from old concept of the spirit boards, which is like 500 years old. And uh, many people still use different forms of spirit boards, but with, with the Ouija board, it became so mainstream to a point where people don't want to acknowledge 
that that's not what it was intended for. It, it was never intended to contact the dead. It was meant to contact you, your own self. It, the whole point of the spirit board is to talk to your aspect of you that you can't contact normally, your subconscious part of yourself through the spirit board. But over time, people started having spirits and demons and angels and all kinds of entities come through these boards to a point where that's mostly what it's associated with now. And same with tarot. Tarot was originated a for an internal thing you would give yourself readings to learn more about you it wasn't really giving them to other people and but over time it's the idea of spirit communication becomes a more it's on tv it's on radio it's a very popular thing now where originally it was a very private you know individual thing that wasn't really talked about yeah i mean like i battle a little bit with like the concept of the, the ouija boards just because my mom had a really bad experience with them and she kind of told me and my sister we, we weren't allowed to use uh ouija boards but the rest of the tarot stuff and like she's got her own spirit box and everything like that she's fine with it's just that particular aspect and i think it's because she had a really bad experience with it and I think sometimes it's the intention behind it. Um, unfortunately, it's like now that the intention behind, um, like you said, like the intention originally was to talk to your the your sub self and your other self basically. But the culturally, culturally, and not everybody does this, but culturally, spirit um, Ouija boards are used um, more as a I want to get scared, you know, kind of thing like people. Oh, no, yeah, to it, to try and scare it's also themselves. like that's the whole thing with any while, um, while we're on this topic is it's real. People, if you've clicked on this video and you're just trying to get a laugh because you think this stuff's not actually real, it is. And it can't scare you because it's so real. You get scared because you realize how real it is. And that can be terrifying. It, it should be. Oh, what I mean is, because... like, if you've got the intention of, I want to be scared, I want to use this board to be scared, then I think you're going to get entities through that are like, oh, you want to have fun? I'm going to prank you and scare the shit out of you, you know? It's almost like yeah. some of the spirits coming through and wanting to have a laugh and go, you know, like how people like to prank people and, like, jump out and go rah sort of thing to people and, you know, give them a bit of scare when they're in real life. It's like that. It's like, you know, just because you're dead, it doesn't mean you want to stop pranking people, you know? So I think that... No. No, you might want to do it even more yeah That's what like, I the, find. like like somebody's like commented that before like if you were dead wouldn't you go around just messing with people yeah you know? <laughs> um so I, I, think... I always think about it like casper the friendly ghost yeah so casper is is a friendly ghost but his uncles they're they're mean they're rude they always mess with people yeah they're, it's everything you think about a ghost they're, yeah. they're scary they're smelly they're terrible but what but casper is an outlier casper is that one ghost that nobody wants to be friends with that is constantly shafted because it is different from the other spirits that's that's what's going to happen with any spirit communication three out of the four are going to be nasty mean creatures but the one out of the four is going to be a friendly ghost and that friendly ghost you can learn a lot from and but you also have to acknowledge those three other ghosts and know how to deal with them how to to tell them to leave how to find a respectfulness with them but three out of the four will most likely want to prank you mess with you confuse you lie to you all that stuff well, but like, that one out of four if yeah. somebody's an asshole in in life doesn't mean they're going to stop being an asshole in death <laughs> No, What's and a, they might even become more because they get away with it. Yeah. But yeah, I and, mean, I think that's the only problem that your your intentions there is to get like somebody who will mess with you. So you're going to trap that basically. Yeah. And so the good thing on that is just to write your intentions. Um, I use runic writing, which is the old write, the old Norse uh, system of writing, and I write that on a candle. I write my intention in in rune on a candle before I do most of my uh, mediumship, and I make it's a little tea candle, 
and I make sure the candle's gone. It takes like 20 minutes to burn. And, and by doing that, by burning my intentions into existence, it's more clear what who's going to come through, how long they're going to come through, why they're coming through, instead of just saying, hey, I'm answering cold calls from ghosts. I think of it like whatever system you use, no matter what, if you're talking to spirits, I think you need to have it like a phone system. You're not going to just pick up a phone call from any random phone number. You have some caller ID. I think you should develop some form of spirit ID system, meaning that when you're only picking up and making calls to numbers you know, you're not going to pick up your phone call, type in eight random numbers, hit call and, and have a conversation with somebody you don't even know. I've never heard of anyone doing that. But if you want to do that, go ahead, have fun. But well, it, it does uh, exist in like the mundane world. It's called like a meagle, where people like connect to talk with strangers. And like half the time, yeah. like sometimes you'll get somebody interested in having fun and just chatting. And other times you'll get a, a real weirdo that's like showing you something they shouldn't be on the internet, you know. Um, it's like it's a 50 50 you know and like same with ouija boards i guess it's like you're 50 50 but if your intention is to get scared you're gonna draw that in you know if your intention is to try and connect with a specific relative or a specific person i think you're much more likely to get that person coming through yeah and and also just what i say just call in the ancestors is a good way just like, so I've spent, a, I've been into a few haunted houses and I had to spend a few nights in some uh, haunted locations. So here's my technique. If you ever find yourself in a haunted house, you, the only option I had was, I call it a party flip. So think about a haunted house is like a house party for ghosts. You have a whole bunch of ghosts having a fun time doing crazy ghostly stuff together. <laughs> I show up. As an uninvited guest, I crashed this party. So what, what I do is I start inviting in my ghosts. So I say, okay, come in, uh, you know, my uncle, my great, 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 great grandpa, he comes in and all, the, <coughs> all these other spirits come in, my, my spirit entourage, and then enough of them, you know, 51% flips the whole house. And then it's, a to it's, it's still haunted, but it's haunted with my ancestors, with my spirits, which are positive and supportive instead of these other ones that are destructive or negative or, you know, all these other things they are. It's just, yeah. and the best example is like, everyone's been to a party where, you know, one person shows up and then another person shows up. And then like five minutes later, it's the people who were supposed to be at the party are outnumbered by all these other people, no one knows. And it's the whole party has been, you know, hijacked. And even a birthday party used to happen like that too, where, you know, big brother is more charismatic than little sister and all the little sister friends end up playing with big brother at the birthday party. And it's, you know, these things can, have happened and there's always an energy of energy flipping with it. Um, that's like uh, like the idea that like if sometimes people like people are scared is actually asking for a relative or something to come forward and protect them is a brilliant idea I mean like um, I was on a spirit a ghost walk thing uh, I think about four or five years ago now it was, it was quite a while ago now um, and we were actually we we're going to this woodland area and stuff and we were with like some mediums and stuff like that and when a few like people that did the paranormal kind of mis investigations and stuff and they brought like a folding table with them and they brought a glass with them to do like it's a little bit like doing a Ouija board but it's not a Ouija board it's like when you put your hand on a glass and then the glass moves around the table um so we did that out in this woodlands and they were slowly removing one person's after another and like the entity that was there wanted to scare people you know it wanted to freak people out it wanted to get rid of people from the forest basically um it wanted to freak people out um and we we're doing the whole table thing and it was moving this glass more and more violently to the extent of like 
it ended up with me just having my hand on the glass but I had it in such a way that if this was the glass that my finger was like only like touching it, the tips of it because it was moving that quickly away from my hand I couldn't physically keep my fingers on the glass um it was just moving that violently across the table wow. and uh, the woman that there was that was the medium was like talking about what they were saying and stuff and she was like it wants to know why the hell aren't you scared of it you know it was like doing all this stuff to try and scare you and freak you out and stuff and, I was, and it was like why why aren't you scared of it you know it's doing all this stuff trying to freak you out and I was like well um if you're there I've also got my family with me and like it was like well if you're there but you, you know it's it's the idea that there's something there that you can't see that might attack you but also what like you're saying what you can't see is the other people around you so like your family members and stuff that have passed on and your guides around you that passed on they're also there it's like you're outnumbered you know <laughs> there's one of you there's many of your spirit guides and family members that will not want something bad to happen to you so i think so there's might be yeah. one of that band entities yeah and just you know call them in and just say hey uh ancestors or loved ones or anyone in particular that you know there for you just say hey come in i'm doing this and i would like you here and they they listen yeah. so it's almost um, you being afraid of them gives them the power sometimes i think with the negative ones it's like you've yeah. been afraid and so uh any other comments on this topic i think i said i said my piece <laughs> I mean, like, I like to experiment with different ways to kind of, like, do paranormal investigations and stuff, and I think I'm going to do a lot more of that as well in the future, but I think, like, I don't think, like, necessarily people should, you know, people going into it, they have to kind of have the right ethos basically the right intentions because i think that that's the main thing that people get scared of i mean it's like it's not really that it's your intention behind it like you were saying like if you just dial a random number on a phone you're going to get something weird you know but if you have a phone number or you have an intention behind it you can direct that phone call to something useful or somebody useful yeah and one more thing with the spirit connection being like a phone is make sure you have a clear signal. So before you really start the reading with whatever entity, just ask, is this a clear signal? Is, the, is this is a secure line? Meaning that is there going to be any interruptions? Is there any interference on behalf of the spirit? And be, by asking, is this a clear channel? They, by, they will tell you that should be the first question you should ask because just like when you're having a phone call, first question I ask is, can you hear me? Yeah. And if, if they don't, one, if, if they don't say anything, that means they didn't hear me. So <laughs> usually, usually when I use my mom's spirit box, I usually get one person coming through. Like it's almost like, like my voice, but not my voice, if that makes sense. And it's always in like a very singing tone, almost like they're singing everything they say. And they always come in and say hello. So it's, it's like female voice, very similar to mine, coming in, singing hello and talking on it. And I I really believe that, I believe that's my spirit guides coming through to, I know who that is, but um, I believe she's coming through to kind of direct everything. And one of the interesting things was um, when we were doing this one spirit box session with my mom, um, we had like three or four like spirits entities coming through and you could actually hear her on the thing giving them orders to say hey wait your turn you, you know giving them orders. Oh, she was the moderator yeah she was like the chat moderator for it she was like directing them going okay you're first you're second wait your turn you know because there was like multiple of them coming through at once and then that gets confusing so you've got two you've got like three different like very because like whenever we do it usually has like um it's always like when something comes through it'll use the same voice like it'll use a different like it'll use the same voice whenever it communicates so like it, if it has like somebody with an irish accent it'll be somebody who comes through with an irish accent whenever they speak through the spirit box it'll sound like that person um 
so you could tell that there was like three separate entities because of different voices and different accents and different tones and she was like directing them to like stay in line instead of all trying to talk at once because it was ne- not going to get anywhere basically and that was really funny it was really interesting that she was trying to she'd been a chat moderator basically um trying to organize them so like they didn't all flood the same the same uh, channel basically yeah and uh it on that the last thing i really got to say is I, I recommend you find a liaison. By liaison, I mean a certain individual spirit that you have a deep connection with that is your go-between, meaning that you don't in, you do not directly interface with any spirit other than your liaison. You only interact with that one spirit, and that person is your middleman, your go-between, your, in, your communication between the two. And so that's the last thing, really, just like build a relationship with an entity and find that back and forth. I mean, um, it was it it was uh, it, it I always found it kind of interesting doing them. I really love doing them. So I wouldn't if you don't know how to connect with like a pick an entity to connect with, go on to YouTube. There's loads of guided meditations to to basically to, to learn to interact with you meet your spirit guides loads of people always ask do i have a spirit guide or what is my spirit guide like everybody has a spirit guide at least one usually people have multiple um but it's better for you to go and do that guided meditation but then somebody saying this is what your spirit guides are like because then you're going to have a personal connection with them and actually know like you said like know them to be able to interact with them later on so yeah and it and have them be the one who interacts with new new spirits, yeah. and then then they tell you what they have to say between. It's like it may make it more complicated, but it it does isolate you a little bit from the process because you really don't want all that ectoplasm slime on you. I, I'll I'll be honest. Well, also stuff, you know, it gives you it gives you yeah. somebody to basically be the bouncer as well. So if things get a little bit out of hand or you get somebody who's a bit nasty or a bit not not very nice through, you can call upon that spirit guide and say, look, this person, I don't want them around anymore. They're nasty. Can you please yeah, tell you me? Got block them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the best example is exactly what you said is like a YouTube moderator. Like they have they have abilities to block people who are disrupting the the flow. Yeah. So, um, okay, thank you for having me, Riley. Hey, okay. thank you again. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to his channel, please check out the description down below and go check him out. Uh, he's also done a reading for me as well, so please check that out as well. All right. Yeah, that will be out probably after this video. So, <laughs> take care, okay. everyone.